Welcome to the weather forecast for the week beginning Tuesday, September 16th. I'm having to record from home for this week, sorry about that. I'm Chief Meteorologist John Ensworth for Longmont Public Media. This Wednesday, September 17th, we have the new moon. You might have gone out early on Tuesday and seen a very funny, like, toenail looking moon in the morning sky. It was pointing almost straight down. It's just an interesting combination of the geometry of the uh, path of the sun and the moon and the planets and the horizon and where the sun is right now, but uh, it did look kind of odd. Uh, so moonrise, moonset, very close to sunrise and sunset. Let's go back and take a look at these records. We left you off last week with all these possible records that may be set or broken. So what actually happened? Well, we did set the latest 100 degree temperature in a year. That occurred on Saturday. Uh, we had the shortest time from going from 90 degrees Fahrenheit or over to snow. That was probably a very easy thing to break. Uh, we did hit the greatest number of 90 degree plus days, but it uh, was only tied on Labor Day. It took until Monday the 14th to break it, and then on Tuesday the 15th we've done it again. We have a lot of cold records as well, too. We have a record low high temperature. Uh, we were looking at 42 for Tuesday, and it was actually still as warm as 44. That occurred after midnight, so the daytime, the afternoon temperatures are down in the 30s, but that doesn't matter. It's midnight to midnight, and it stayed just a touch too warm past midnight. So we didn't get that one. But the record low Tuesday was 31, beating the old record of 34. We had the record low high temperature on Wednesday. The old record was 53. It's now set at 41. Huge break there. We did have the record low on Wednesday by a degree, 30 degrees instead of 31. We did not break the record two-day temperature drop, uh, the previous record being 76. We only dropped 65, but the one-day temperature drop we did do, the previous record was 53, and we had 62. So not too bad. We did have the second earliest snow and the most snow in the first storm of one inch. So um, that's at Denver. We actually had an inch and a half here in Longmont. And we were looking at the possible breaking of the precipitation record for September 8th. Overall, we did get um, about three quarters of an inch of water, but it took about two and a half days to do it. So we did not break that record on that one day. Taking a look at drought conditions, I don't think the rainfall that we got is really showing up in the data yet, because here's the previous week and here's this week's, showing again more drought-like uh, conditions out in the western part of the state. So hold on, we'll see what it says next week. Nationwide, a lot of the drought regions have now kind of connected throughout uh, Colorado, Utah, into Arizona, Nevada. So let's get some rain in here. We did get rain with our storm over the last seven days. The light greens are half inch to an inch, and that tracks, we had about 0 0.8, 0 0.77 or so in my backyard rain gauge. The darker greens top an inch. That's all the way through this northern mountain area where the fires are. Not out in the west so much. We had some spots top two inches in yellow. Let's take a look at the snow. We have to look at day by day, and I'll give you the totals for our two nearest cities. So up to 7 a.m. Tuesday, we didn't have anything but some uh, light rain, but there was precipitation falling as snow up in the foothills. Half inch, almost two inches above Boulder, and trace to a quarter of an inch in Boulder. For the next morning, up to 7 a.m. Wednesday, we got everything we could get. 1.6, 1.7, there's two inches, a little bit uh, out on 66. And then above Boulder, threes, fours, five inch amounts. And in Boulder itself, we had five inches, four inches, 3.8. So pretty good. Up here, uh, I don't know what community that is, 6.8 inches of snow up there. All right, and then we picked up a trace more by Thursday, 7 a.m., because the storm cut off and was uh, slower. And we ended up with 1.5 
officially in Longmont, Boulder 5.6. Well, you've probably noticed that smoke is starting to leak back in, and it's inevitable. There's so much smoke in the atmosphere. The particulate load is ridiculous. Uh, on Monday, we were in the clear. The high pressure system is sort of centered in the Utah area and just was circulating clean air around for a change, bringing the uh, big swoop of stuff up to the north. But by Tuesday, it was starting across the Wyoming-Colorado border. And the forecast for Wednesday is that it finally just kind of breaks free and heads down the front range as stuff does. We'll see it worse later in the week. We have a trough off the coast that will be progressing inward, and that's going to eventually make a straight fetch from the fires down into the Four Corners area, Colorado, and like that. So sorry about that. The smoke is back. This is the lower smoke, or smoke near the surface. And what it tries to do is break up this total smoke at all levels forecast for Wednesday into upper troposphere, middle troposphere, and near surface. The near surface is moderate. So you'll probably still be able to see, at least on Wednesday, the uh, outline of the mountains to the west, even if the skies are very white. But this will probably be mixing down. There's just too much smoke not to get it uh, spilling into our area. The water vapor satellite loop shows that high over Utah, the ridge extending up into western Canada, and the moisture being shunted off up there. We have uh, Hurricane Sally down here about to hit the uh, Alabama-Mississippi coast, and a little tropical something off of Corpus Christi in the tropical moisture envelope around that area, and bone dry air off of Southern California, and very dry air up into the central mountains and stretching out onto the plains. So we're, we're just caught in between the two moist regions in really dry air again. Give you some good news though. The normal high temperatures over the next 10 days drops from 79 to 75, lows from 61 to 56. So we're starting to really see a slope now. It is heading down. Temperatures are still above normal for much of the next week, and there is a hint in the middle of next week of a return of a trough, cool air, and some precipitation chances. So don't give up. It, niceness is out there in the future. Over the next 15 days, watch this ridge in the west. You can see it kind of consolidating with a central high there, not far from us, keeping us above average. Here comes the trough Friday into Saturday, passing by, and that'll really start a cool down. Not tremendous, but it'll keep us somewhat cooler. You can see the winds are now coming by the weekend straight from the fires towards us. Then going off to Tuesday and into Wednesday next week, you see a, a more general low coming down, trough coming down. After that, it does look like the ridge may reestablish its, itself and then another trough starts coming in in the west. So as I called it before, this is a progressive pattern. So you, you'll see troughs replaced by ridges, replaced by troughs. Things are more on the move than they were. There's that high all the way out on September 29th, September 30th, back at the beginning. You can see Sa Sally down here. I want to call it Sandy, it's not that. Sally down here coming inland and passing just north of Atlanta before kind of getting absorbed into the westerlies. You can look for cool downs over the next 15 days. Here's somewhat above normal temperatures. Here's a big blob of cold air coming down later in the week, and it kind of gets into the eastern plains, but never really backs up hill far enough to get to the front range. The east gets really cold. Here comes a cold front Sunday the 20th, into the west and it kind of fizzles out. That's that passing short wave. Abnormal heat for a while. Here comes another cold front um, on the 23rd and that one actually finally comes down. The front range 23rd, 24th, 25th of September are cool down and, and maybe some precipitation chances then too. So again, it is beginning to break. This high likes to reestablish itself but troughs are making their way through it now and then. 
by the end of the month. Very hot in the west. Oh, crazy heat on the 30th with another cold front in the Great Lakes. And to support the dry air and the ridge, the next five days in precipitation is nothing for color rocks except maybe this a few hundred feet of soil up here in the extreme northwest may see some precipitation. Over the next 10 days with that first smaller passing trough, the mountains may see some showers and just a little wetting on the plains. So looking out for the next seven days, we have 80s almost touching 90 again on Thursday before we settle back to somewhat above normal in the mid 80s for the weekend, low 80s coming out of the weekend, and upper 70s into next week. We don't get a small chance of rain come back until the beginning of next week. Probably better Tuesday, Wednesday, when we uh, will be making another video to cover that next week. We'll finish with Sally. Sally is a hurricane. Did look at first like it was going to almost make one of the most catastrophic approaches to New Orleans itself in the mouth of the Mississippi. It is strengthened greatly and that has helped to kind of um, feel the westerlies a little more so it's curving more to the east. So hooray, some, some horrible disaster uh, looks like has been uh, largely avoided. Uh, these people here don't want to be hit by it but they don't have the same lowland, below sea level, uh, levee type situation. They're at least above sea level and uh, can weather the storm. For more local news and more frequent weather updates, check out Longmont Leader at thelongmontleader.com. I've been Chief Meteorologist John Ensworth. Keep looking up.